While learning JavaScript, you might have heard about the term first class function and higher order function in online articles or tutorials. So what we mean by that? Well, these are just terms given to functions which behaves differently than the functions in any other programming language. Let's understand what a first class function and higher order function actually is. So we have learned that in JavaScript, a function is treated like any other value. And to be more precise, a function is an object in JavaScript. And since a function is an object, you can treat a function like any other value in JavaScript. And this is what a first class function is. A programming language is said to have first class function if functions in that programming language are treated like any other value. For example, you can assign a function to a variable like any other value. You can pass a function as an argument to another function and you can even return a function from another function. So when we can do all these stuffs with a function, we say that function in that programming language is treated like a first class citizen and they are first class functions. Okay. And in JavaScript programming language also, a function is a first class function. That means in JavaScript, you can assign a function to a variable. You can pass a function as an argument to another function and you can return a function from another function. And let me prove you that a function is just an object in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and create a very simple function. Let's call it greetings. Inside this function, let's simply log a simple message. Hello world. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's call this greetings function. If I save the changes here, it has logged hello world. Now we have learned that when we create an object after creating that object, we can add some properties to that object in the same way to this greetings function. I can go ahead and add a property. Let's call it length and let's set it to English. Okay. So here I'm adding a property on this greetings function and let's go ahead and let's log this greetings dot lang if i save the changes you can see here english is log so just like any other object here we are adding a property to this greetings function and this proves that a function is just an object in javascript okay now remember that while this is perfectly valid in JavaScript, this is considered a harmful practice. So you should not add random properties to a function object. Instead, you can use objects for that. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's see some examples of first class function. Here, we are assigning a function to a variable. And it is possible because in JavaScript, a function is just another value and we can assign a value to a variable. Now you might already be familiar with this syntax. This syntax is called function expression where we assign an anonymous function to a variable and we have already talked about this. Let's see another example. Here in this example, we have this get result array function. Okay. Then we also have this calculate age function. Now when we are calling this get result array function, if you see here, we are passing this calculate age function as its argument. Okay, so to this get result array function, we are passing another function as its argument. So this is also possible because in JavaScript, a function is a first class function. That means we can treat it like any other value. So just like we can pass any other value to a function here, we are passing a function itself to another function as its argument. Okay. And in the same way, we can also return a function from within another function. So here in this example, we have this interview question function. Now from within this function, if you notice, we are returning an anonymous function. And this is possible because in JavaScript functions are first class function. Functions are just another value in JavaScript. And hence we can also return them from within a function. Okay. So with these three examples, I hope that the concept of first class function is clear to you. Since in JavaScript, a function is just another value. We can treat it like an, any other value. We can assign it to a variable. We can pass it as an argument 
and we can return it from within a function. Now, how does this actually work? Let's understand that. So in this example, we have this create function and then we are assigning this create function to this message variable. Now, if you remember, while assigning a function to a variable, we don't use parentheses. So here we are not using parentheses. Now here what will happen when we are creating this function, when the JavaScript engine will scan this code, this function will be stored in the heap memory because a function is just like an object and since it is an object, it is a reference type and we have learned that reference types are stored in heap memory. So this function definition will be stored somewhere in the heap memory and the name which we have provided to, to this function, that means discrete, it will act as an identifier and it will store a reference to the memory address where that function definition is stored. Okay, so if you see this greet is just an identifier which is storing a reference to this function. All right, now when we are assigning this greet function to this message variable, another identifier called message will be created. And since this greet is storing the reference to this function, that same reference will be assigned to this message variable. So now this message variable will, will also point to the same address. So this message variable will also point to this same function and that's why just like when we use parenthesis on this greet variable it will execute this function in the same way when we use parenthesis on this message variable it will execute this same function okay in the same way here we have two functions get result and calculate age so first of all this function definition will be stored somewhere in the heap memory and an identifier called get result will be created which will store the reference to that function definition in the same way, the definition of this calculate age function, it will be stored in the heap memory and this calculate age will act as an identifier which will store the reference to that function definition. Now, when we are calling this get result function and when we are passing this calculate age to this get result function, so here we have a mistake. We only have one parameter for this function. Okay, so just ignore this years parameter here. Now, when we are passing this calculate age function to this get result function, the reference stored in this calculate age will be assigned to this function parameter. Okay, so an identifier called function parameter will be created and it will also have the same reference which this calculate age is storing. So both this calculate age and function is pointing to same function definition. Okay, and that's why when we are using this parenthesis, this set of parenthesis on this function, it is going to call this function. Okay, and it will pass 1989 to this birth year parameter. Finally, here we have this greet function and from within this greet function, we are returning an anonymous function. So first of all, the definition of this greet function will be stored in the heap memory and this greet will act as an identifier which will store a reference to that function definition. Then we are calling this greet function here. So here we are using a set of parentheses. That means it will execute this greet function. Now what are we returning from within this greet function? We are returning another function. So first of all, this function will again get stored in the heap memory. Okay. And since we are returning this function from within this greet function, you know, to this message variable, this reference will be stored. Okay. So an identifier for that message variable will be created and what it will store? it will store a reference to this function, to this anonymous function, which we are returning from within this greet function. Okay. And that's why when we use parenthesis on this message variable, it will execute this function. And with these examples, I hope now you understand how function works in JavaScript. Functions are reference type and they get stored in heap memory. And when we store a function to a variable, that variable stores the reference to the memory address where that function is stored. All right, now let's talk about what is a higher order function. So a higher order function is the function which operates on other function either by taking them as an argument or by returning them. Okay, so in simple words, a higher order function is a function that receives a function as an argument 
or it returns a function as output or it does both. In this example, this get result array function is a higher order function. Why? Because when we are calling this get result array function, we are passing an array, so this birth years array, and we are also passing this calculate age function as its parameter. So this get result array function is taking another function as its argument. And when a function takes another function as its argument, that function is a higher order function. Okay. And in this example, from this interview question function, we are returning another function. We are returning an anonymous function. So when a function returns another function from within itself, that is also an that is also a higher order function. So in this example, this interview question is a higher order function because it is returning a function. But this is not an example of higher order function. Here we are assigning a function to a variable. So this is not a higher order function. You know, this function is not a higher order function. Okay, a function is a higher order function only when it takes a function as its argument or when it returns a function from within itself or it does both. When we can assign a function to a variable, that function is not a higher order function. Okay, so remember this point. Now, higher order function is only possible because of the presence of first class function in a programming language. So if a programming language supports first class function, that means it also supports higher order function. Okay, and in JavaScript, Functions such as filter, reduce, map, for each, etc. are all examples of higher order function because all these functions takes another function as its argument. And we are going to learn about all these functions in great detail. And there you will see that all these functions are taking a callback function as its argument. Okay, and that's why these functions are called as higher order function. Now, many people think that first class function and higher order function is the same thing, but that's not at all true. First class function is simply a concept. A programming language either supports first class function or it does not support it. On the other hand, higher order function is a more practical approach. A higher order function is supported by a programming language if that language supports first class function. Okay. So the presence of first class function implies the presence of higher order function. But the presence of higher order function does not imply the presence of first class function. Remember this point. And higher order functions are just like regular functions with an added ability of receiving and returning another functions as argument and output. All right. So this is all from this lecture. In the coming lectures, we are going to see how we can pass a function as an argument to another function and how we can return a function from within another function. Thank you for listening and have a great day.